Welcome back, guys. <clears throat> uh, today, I'm going to try to answer the question, <clears throat> uh, can Linux really replace Windows? Now, the answer to that question might vary depending upon what you want to do what you currently do in Windows and what what you would like to be able to do in Linux. So the answer may be different for different people depending upon the tasks they want to accomplish. Uh, for this analysis I'm going to throw the book at it. I'm going to hit it with everything. That way you can make a decision whether or not you are ready or Linux is ready for you. And so let's take a, a look at <clears throat> uh, some of the tasks that you would want to be able to do. So the first one would be email. Now, <clears throat> Linux can replace Windows email very easily. You've got several different options. You can use Gmail on the web through a browser. You can configure your email accounts using Evolution, Geary, uh, Thunderbird, lots of options. So email is a big yes. Word processing and general office related duties, you can go from anything such as uh, numeric and Abbey Word to w WPS Office all the way to LibreOffice. I, I, I uh, fall in the middle and I use WPS Office most of the time. It has a presentation, spreadsheet, and word processor. Works fine. Dictionary, Evolution for Mail, and Atrial for PDF viewing. So Linux does a good job, and it does. Uh, it is compatible uh, with Microsoft uh, Excel files, Word files. So you shouldn't have any problem with the transition as far as Office work goes. For browsing, you have a multitude of browsers available from brow from Opera to Pale Moon, uh, Chromium, Chrome, Firefox. So. Uh, you, you should have no issues at all with, with your uh, browsing. <clears throat> Digital photo management, you've got um, GThumb, Digicam, OpenShot, lots of, lots of uh, digital photo viewers and organizers. I use Nomax to keep it very light. Um, Nomax is available on most distributions and so um, you can go all the way up to GIMP which is more of a Photoshop replacement so for photo processing Linux pretty much has that covered. The next uh, item on the list is photo editing. Uh, again those same programs that I mentioned will do organizing and editing uh, GIMP is more of a, uh, an editor, but you can organize your photos very easily in a variety of Linux programs, and you can do uh, very, very simple editing through complex Photoshop style editing. So that's pretty much covered. For video um, editing, I use OpenShot, um, but you can use uh, Caden Live, there's, there's a, a few other video editors within Linux that do a great job. Uh, let's see, for video playback, I use SM Player, but most uh, Linux distributions come with VLC. <clears throat> and MP3s, of course, you can use Banshee. I happen to use Banshee, but you can use Clementine. And again, there are a variety of uh, Linux distributions that can handle your MP3 playback. There is a uh, program that will even handle your Pandora. 
called Pythos, uh, which works nicely. And basically it brings up, um, if you have a Pandora account, Pythos will bring up your uh, stations that you've created and you can play songs uh, that are covered within those stations. Now, I don't use Spotify, uh, so I'm not sure if Spotify is covered. Uh, I believe it is. I believe you can uh, play back your Spotify. But again, because I don't use it, <clears throat> I'm not 100% sure. So the next category is um, Cody. Cody for your videos, uh, multimedia. Uh, it is available on most Linux distributions. As you can see, I have it installed here. You can pull in YouTube content. You can pull in a lot of um, news, NBC, ABC, CBS, Fox News. You can get all kinds of channels on the Kodi, Kodi Media Player. It's a really, really nice program. Okay, and so let's go on to gaming. Um, <clears throat> Steam is usable on most Linux distributions. Now, mainly I have a Steam account, which works fine on most Linux distributions. Um, War Thunder, which is really online gaming, which you can pull in through your Chrome browser or Firefox browser. Uh, you can pull that in, download the Linux file, and play War Thunder on Linux with no problem at all. And then you've got Battle.net. Now, I am a big fan of Hearthstone. Um, it work. You can get it to work on most Linux distributions. It's easier on some than on others, and I'll go over that with you <clears throat> when I wrap this up. You can sync your iPhone. Uh, for example, I have my iPhone right here, and I'm going to plug it in for you. <clears throat> so when you plug it in, it, it alerts me and says that it just I just inserted a medium with digital photos. Now, I'll click OK and you can open Banshee to pull in your photos, uh, to pull in your uh, MP3s, but I'm going to just say open the folder. And as you can see, my iPhone is now mounted on the desktop. It li it's listed in my file manager, and you can see my files, folders within the iPhone are all listed here. So if I want to pull up my photos, there they are. It's as easy as that. Now, it's this is available in uh, most Linux distributions. Um, you can even see that I have Mac format, Linux format, magazines, Yahoo Mail, Flipboard. These are all coming up in my documents folder within the phone. So if you want to sync your phone, um, most Linux distributions have the ability to uh, recognize your phone and bring up the information. Okay, the next category on the list is instant messaging, which there are a few different alternatives. Um, I don't have really anything installed right now, but what I would recommend to you if you want to uh, do instant messaging, I will show you. Just go ahead and install Pigeon. 
and Pigeon can provide instant messaging on a variety of services. Now I'm in Arch right now. You can see how fast that loaded. Now when I go into internet, I have Pigeon instant messaging. And then you can choose just to add the type of account. As you can see, everything is pretty much listed here. So uh, instant messaging is covered very well. Next on the list would be Microsoft Paint. Now I don't really use Microsoft Paint, but there is a program called Pinta that is basically an equivalent of Microsoft Paint. So if you use Microsoft Paint, you're covered within Linux. And again, this is pretty much usable in any distribution. The next thing on the list would be NVIDIA drivers. Now, I have two computers with NVIDIA drivers, so that's important to me. And if I go into system tools, let's see. Uh, you can see that I've got NVIDIA installed in the latest 358.16. Very easy to do within Arch. Not always so easy within Debian, but very easy usually within Ubuntu-based distributions. Okay, so next on the category would be Broadcom Wi-Fi. Now, I don't have... Broadcom on this particular computer, but on my computer with the Broadcom Wi-Fi, uh, most Linux distributions will allow you to install the drivers. Some are easier to do than others. The easiest on Broadcom Wi-Fi is Ubuntu-based distributions, followed by Arch and then Debian would be number three but they all can do it so let's go into uh, video streaming now Netflix can be used with pretty much all Linux distributions now um, you can pull it up usually within Chrome with no problem at all uh, the same goes for Amazon Prime within Chrome. And uh, that will work with pretty much any Linux distribution. Now, Hulu is another story. Hulu made some changes and depending on the distribution you're using, um, you may or may not be able to use Hulu. Hulu so far, I have not been able to find a way to stream Hulu within Debian. The easiest of the three to be able to stream Hulu is Arch. Uh, Ubuntu, it can be done, but it takes a little more work with PPAs. See, Hulu requires a package called HAL, H-A-L. Um, Arch has it readily available, so, so that's what makes Arch easy as far as Hulu goes. Ubuntu has it available through a PPA. Makes it a little bit harder, but it is doable. And then Debian is number three. I have not found a way to stream Hulu within Debian. If you know of one, please post it in the uh, comments. But I have not found a way to stream Hulu within Debian. Now, within Arch, you can set up Amazon Prime, like I've done, Hulu and Netflix as SSBs. Uh, and it's a single source browser. Uh, you can set it up through the ICE application, which is right here. You see this ICE? ICE allows you to set up a, an application or an SSB 
on pretty much anything that you can pull up on a website. For example, <clears throat> I set up Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon Prime. Now, for Netflix, I had to use Chromium. For Amazon Prime, I used Chromium. But for Hulu, I had to use Firefox because it will only play on Firefox. Now, if you have ICE in Debian or in, or in Ubuntu-based distribution, I have found that Firefox does not show up as an option. Firefox only shows up in the Arch ICE version, which makes it easier because you can set up pretty much anything. Uh, within Debian or Ubuntu, you can set up anything that will run in Chrome or Chromium. Now you have to have Chrome or Chromium installed in order to be in order to use this I don't have chrome you can see it's grayed out but I do have chromium so that is an option for me so pretty much any any um, website can be configured as a program so let me uh, and I have a video on this um, <clears throat> that I did maybe a month or two ago but let's take a look at YouTube okay so if you wanted to set up a uh, site specific browser for YouTube all you need is the web address and then you select the browser that you want to use I'll select chromium and you can select an icon or the site favicon. The site favicon should pull in, and in this case it's not. So I am, well, it looks like ice froze on me. So let's close that out. Oh, there it is. It just took a minute. And as you can see, it pulled up this as the site favicon it took a minute to do that now if I prefer I can use an icon that I have so if I go into my pictures folder I have a bunch of icons that I use for ice let me check something here so if I want to use this YouTube or that YouTube I can go ahead and do that as you can see now I'm gonna click apply and now I'm gonna close out ice and if I go into my internet you can see that let's see YouTube is listed at the bottom if I right click and add it to the desktop you can see it's right here. Now if I double click it go to YouTube and you can resize this whatever way you'd like. And I usually make it a little bit smaller. Okay so you can see that this is what YouTube would look like if you created the SSB through your through your uh, ice SSB program it's very nice it makes getting to specific websites very easy okay so if I can just recap on that the all of these sites Amazon Prime uh, Hulu Netflix they're all accessible 
in Arch. They're all accessible with a little more work in Ubuntu. And they're all accessible in Debian with the exception of Hulu Plus. Hulu Plus requires HAL, which I have not been able to locate. When I find references to it within Debian, it, it states that it has been removed. And no matter how hard I try, I have not been able to get it to work within Firefox or Chromium or Chrome. If you are able to, please uh, let me know how you did it. So, I believe that pretty much wraps up pretty much whatever you would like to do within um, Linux. Now, <clears throat> also, converting vinyl to digital, I have done it within Linux using Audacity. Works very easy. I have a video on that. So I think I've pretty much covered everything. Now, I have a spreadsheet here. If you look at the task, you can see that they all are covered except Hulu and Debian. Email, Office, Browser, Digital Photo Organizing, Editing, Video Editing, Video Playback, MP3, iPhone Syncing, Vinyl Conversion, Pandora, Hulu, Amazon Prime, Netflix, Kodi, Battle.net, Steam Games, War Thunder, Instant Messaging, Microsoft Paint, NVIDIA Drivers, Broadcom Drivers. They're all pretty much covered except Hulu and Debian. Now, I have to reiterate that when I say Arch is the easiest to get everything working, I'm not talking about the installation. The installation of Arch is, in my opinion, easy if you install Arch through Manjaro or Anturgos. It's more difficult if you install Arch through Architect, and it's very difficult installing Arch right out of the box, the plain vanilla Arch. That's uh, command line only. It gives you just the operating system, no graphics, no desktop environment. You have to load all that up yourself. I don't recommend it, um, especially to new users of Linux. So Arch, in my opinion, is the easiest to get all of this working as long as you go through Manjaro or Anturgos. Ubuntu is the next easiest and again the only reason it's not quite as easy is because of the PPAs. With Ubuntu based distributions not all programs are available through the repos. In many cases you have to add specific PPAs to pull in those specific apps. It's a little bit more work uh, but you can still get the job done. Then Debian is the, mo the more difficult of the three as far as getting everything running. Um, it's a little bit more difficult. Debian was not intended to be a uh, desktop environment, more of a server-based environment. And so it's harder to get help when you're trying to configure your desktop. I happen to really like Debian, especially uh, distributions like, uh, well, you can install the plain vanilla Debian and select your own desktop environment, or you can go for Sparky Linux, which is outstanding, Point Linux, which is outstanding, MX15, which is outstanding. Now. Uh, again, you're going to have to work a little harder with Debian than you do with the other two. Um, which the desktop environment you're looking at here is Arch Linux and it was installed through Architect. And as you can see, everything works. Um, through Architect, you can pick 
the desktop environment you want, whether it be Mate, which I have, or XFCE, um, which is very nice, LXDE, which is very nice. It's got, when you go through the installer, and again, it's not the easiest, but if you go through the architect installer, you can pick the desktop environment you want, or you can pick more than one and switch them in the login screen. Now, Manjaro has a version for pretty much, well, their, their default versions are XFCE and KDE. If you're gonna start out with Manjaro, I would highly recommend installing the XFCE version. Once you try that, I think you'll be very happy. But if you want to try other desktop environments, they do have those uh, in the community section where you can find um, Mate, Cinnamon, uh, Fluxbox, Openbox. There's a new Deepin version. So Manjaro has just about anything that you would want. And again, they are easy to install um, for a new Arch user. The first time I wanted to try Arch, I installed Manjaro XFCE and I found it to be easy and straightforward. As easy as any Ubuntu distribution. So if you haven't tried Arch, I would highly recommend it. So guys, that is the wrap up. So the question, I guess, the answer to the question, can Linux completely replace Windows? My, in my opinion, the answer is yes. And so I hope you enjoyed the video. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you soon. Take care.